bottle management is built throughout the platform to manage multiple bottles, be able to search over all your experimentation and manage the training data associated with it. So let's take a look at a real world example of one of our customers. So here, this is a shopping marketplace that has product listings that look similar to this. In this case, a bunch of Louis Vuitton bags. And to enable their buyers to find products on their site, they want to have very thorough categorization. In our platform, we allow you to categorize things in custom ways, search over them, and then save those searches, which is really powerful because those save searches are essentially training sets, validation sets, or test sets. So you can carve out an overall huge set of data within your application to just a subset and record that. Even more, these safe searches are dynamic uh, and that's configurable. So if you want it to be an open-ended search, where, meaning more data being added to the app that fits this criteria will appear in that search, you can do that or you can fix it in time so that no data past a certain point of time will affect that search results making your data sets reproducible. You can also uh, um, modify search results. You can adjust the search scores and filter by the type of data, image, or video. So now let's take a look at some of the custom models that are built in this application and some of the features around those custom models. So here you can see the explicit training data that went into this model, how many examples of each of the concepts, the model version, when it was created, the current status and how much data it would learn from, even see the training uh, loss curve. So how well was it converging during the training process? If you take a look at the versions, every time you train a model, it gets versioned. Just like software development, you make a commit and push it to production. You could do the same thing here. You create a new model version. If it's good in terms of the evaluation metrics, you can push that to production and use it in your API calls. Now to take a look at how good a model is, we have a full set of evaluation metrics. So each of the concepts here gives an accuracy score, the amount of data, false positives and negatives, true positives, and precision and recall rates. This allows you to understand how well each of the concepts of your model is performing. On the right, you can actually see that in further detail with true examples. So things that were uh, actually labeled something but being predicted a different category, you can see that on the right. As you click any of the tables here, it dynamically updates the user interface. So you can be browsing your results, including a full confusion matrix below, and be able to identify examples that kind of explain why the model's performing the way it is. So it provides a level of model explainability uh, that we haven't seen elsewhere. So this dynamic matrix and precision recall curves really is informative when you're building models and trying to understand when you're running them in production, why they're performing the way they are. So each of the concepts is broken down in detail. At the top here, there's also this operating threshold, which is uh, how uh, typically when you're running AI models, you get the confidence scores back and you want to trust them above some threshold. So as you change that threshold, the evaluation metrics in these tables actually updates. And this is really helpful in helping you choose what threshold is gonna give you the best performance when you operationalize your model.